Stay standing, stay standing, and welcome your 2010-2011 NCAA Division III champions, St. Albert College Green Knights. And I'm also going to ask the team and administrators and members of the college to stand. We're going to be celebrating the team really through the entire program, but another group that deserves a round of applause tonight are you the fans. Ritter Arena and from what I hear, the Abbey Bar and probably many other places here in the Green Bay and De Pere area, we're rocking on Friday and Saturday night. Thank you so much. So much so that I have an idea for the NCAA committee for Division Three. They're always looking for a place to host uh, in the West region roughly every third year, and they want to maximize attendance. Considering the Green Knights have been at seven of the last nine of these things, why not just have it here at the Cornerstone Community Center next time it's out here? Those of you who either made the trip out to Ritter Arena, uh, perhaps watched the video webcast that was provided by the NCAA, uh, and you're probably all sick of hearing my voice right now as it's been running through here for the last 20 minutes, but I'm Tim DeRozier. Uh, I do the broadcast for St. Albert College Green Knight Hockey. I have had the honor and privilege of doing so for the last 18 years, as long as Tim Coughlin's been here. And I'd like to also thank and welcome my broadcast partner, Chris Spearing, who's sitting in the front row here today. So a round of applause for Chris. You know, what a pleasure it's been to follow this program through history. And this year, uh, history was made multiple times by the 2010-2011 program. St. Norbert claimed a whopping seven NCAA Division III statistical championships this year in the 2010-2011 season. Just listen to some of these numbers. The Green Knights led the country in scoring defense at 1.8 goals per game. That is the third time in the last five years the Green Knights have led the country in scoring defense. So they're obviously doing something right. Thanks, BJ. Thanks, BJ. Tim Coughlin also makes it clear goaltending is what generates your penalty kill numbers, and they also led the nation with an 89.4% kill, so roughly 10% of the time the opponent scored on the power play. The Green Knights shared the best winning percentage in the country with Adrian College, the team the Knights knocked off to win the championship at an 850 winning percentage, and most importantly, they brought home the national title. I'll also mention at this time that junior forward Johan Reed, how was that, yo? Pretty good? All right, I've been getting coaching from his father, Bjorn, who's probably not here tonight. <laughs> He led Division III with seven game-winning goals, did Yo as well, through the course of the year. Now we have B.J. O'Brien coming up later, and we'll mention some of his statistics then, but uh, three of the seven that the team set this year were set by B.J. O'Brien. He came oh so close to a number four, and, uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. Uh, we're going to get going with the program right away. We have a number of folks who are going to get an opportunity to speak tonight, members of the community and of the coaching staff and, of course, of the team. I firmly believe, and I've been following sports a long time in my life, and I firmly believe that every team has someone praying for them to have success. Don't you think? I mean, if you think even as fans, sometimes we, you might pray at night for your team to win, or at least to play well and, and to do well, I know God must hear from a lot of hopeful fans. Yet, for the second time in the last four years, St. Norbert as a team has risen to the top, which to me can only mean one thing. Father Jim Baraniak 
is God's favorite. <laughs> now, if you doubt this, in case you didn't know this as well, he's also the team chaplain for the Super Bowl champion, Green Bay Packers. So someone has some pull beyond the pearly gates. And he'll get us started with our prayer tonight, Father Jim Barania. Friends, from our biblical tradition, a wise and learned man named Paul wrote the following to a young and zealous man named Timothy, of all people. And he offered the following. Train yourself for devotion, for while physical training has a certain degree of value, devotion is valuable in every respect, since it holds a promise of life, both for the present and for the future. This saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. For this we toil and struggle because we have set our hope on the living God who is the Savior of us all. Friends, with all my heart, I believe that this has been the holistic mantra preached by word and example by a record-breaking coach named Timothy to his National Hockey Championship Green Knights. Tim, on behalf of this college community and certainly in the name of my Norbertine brothers, I thank you for instilling a spirit of excellence in our Green Knight hockey players, for their performance on the ice and outside of the arena as well. And so, friends, in a true spirit of thanksgiving, we now bow our heads, we pray for our gracious God's continued blessing upon St. Albert College and all of us gathered here this night. And we do that in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good and loving God, we thank you and praise you for the blessings of this day and for the many ways you empower us to be a blessing to one another. And tonight we gather in particular gratitude for the blessing you have bestowed upon our hockey community, especially our coaches, players, trainers, and fans. We are grateful that they have become a blessing to so many other people as they have represented the greater college community with dignity, integrity, and class. The milestone we celebrate tonight is not simply the crowning jewel of a championship season, but it's in its own unique way. The dedication and discipline required for winning such an honor has become for our college community a true promise of life for us today and for our future. As the one who makes all life complete, we thank you, gracious Lord, for your many blessings to us. Give us the grace to continue to be a blessing to one another. Through the intercession of Mary, the Mother of God, Our Lady of Victory, we make this heartfelt prayer to a good and loving God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Holy Father, St. Norbert, pray for us. It's always that awkward moment when people decide whether you can applaud for a prayer. <laughs> a choice made the decision, the folks made the decision to do that tonight. Um, I received a list about a day ago of the folks who were going to present here, so trying to be a good MC, I always like to do a little bit of homework and research. And uh, because he's not a member of the college per se, the peer mayor, Mike Walsh, and I don't have a long history where I can throw out just a story or something that I know about Mayor Walsh. So I did a quick Google search on uh, Mike Walsh. And there are a lot of Mike Walsh's, first of all. We'll start with that. Even there's another mayor in Ohio somewhere named Mike Walsh. You should know that. Here's what I was able to find. Uh, what I know about Mayor Walsh is that uh, he helped to get the brand new Claude Alloway Bridge together. So applause for Mike Walsh there. 
and he's had a hand in constructing a whole lot of roundabouts in the city of De Pere. So congratulations there. So with that, I'll let Mayor Walsh come up and speak for himself. Mayor Mike Walsh. Thank you, Tim. I, I didn't know there was another Mayor Walsh. Uh, there used to be one in Wisconsin, though, down in Wauwatosa, um, but she wasn't related to me either. <laughs> Well, thank you. Um, I'm, I really appreciate being included, um, myself and the city of De Pere, in this celebration for your uh, Division Three National Championship. What a great privilege and honor for me to be here, and especially for you to win it. I've always been a big hockey fan, and I've gone to a lot of St. Norbert games over the years. You especially play a high quality brand of exciting hockey. I almost went to Minnesota for the games, but I had another commitment. I had to babysit my one-year-old grandson so my daughter and her husband could go. But, but it was grandson, hockey, hockey grandson. Sorry guys, you'll understand when you're a little older. Um, but I did watch you all on, on the computer streaming. Was that an exciting game Friday night or what? I know it didn't happen very often this year, but the ice was just a little bit tilted in Norwich's favor in those first two periods. But you hung in there, and then all hell broke loose in the third period. Sorry, Father. <laughs> to me, Friday night was a championship game. I think the other one was anticlimactic, even though it was very exciting. 11 seniors on the squad. What great careers you've had here. Three national championship finals and two national championships in four years. You can't get much better than that. The players played great, but there's all, there always needs to be someone to get them to play together as a team. And first and foremost, getting the players to even attend St. Norbert. I don't think there's a better coach in Division Three hockey than Tim Coglin. Coach, just keep on doing it. <laughs> just keep on doing what you're doing, and please stick around for another 18 years. <laughs> because you made St. Norbert College and the city of De Pere known for something other than Packer training camp. <laughs> Fellas, it was a pleasure to follow you this year and you have shown that you have what it takes to persevere and win championships. I know that and your education will translate into whatever success you have in the future. So on behalf of the city of De Pere, congratulations on a terrific season and I'd like you to know that we are all proud of you, your accomplishments, and how you represented yourselves, St. Norbert College, and the city of De Pere throughout the year. I guess all that's left to say is, repeat, repeat. Thank you. Our next uh, speaker will be Dr. David Weggy, Professor of Political Science and the Athletic Representative for St. Norbert College. Uh, and I do have uh, a fond memory of, of Dr. Weggy from my freshman year here in 1991. Fall of that year, I think it was an eight o'clock class because the freshmen always get stuck with the eight o'clock classes. And I was trying to stay awake during a political science discussion. And uh, we were going through the primary for the 1992 presidential election, and I still remember Dr. Weggy explaining how Bill Clinton had no chance in the primaries <laughs> of 1991. And look where he's come since then, Dr. David Weggy.
Obviously, that was the class that Tim slept through. <laughs> well, welcome to this uh, wonderful celebration. And uh, let me, uh, first of all, offer my congratulations to the team, uh, the coaches, to uh, our athletic staff, and to all of the fans on this wonderful year. Congratulations. <clears throat> I want to especially thank the team because today was the first day that I've been on the front page of the sports page in Green, in Green Bay Press Gazette. Now, you, you have to play where is Waldo or where is Weggy uh, to find me, but I'm there. Thank you. I don't anticipate that I'll be on the sports page uh, too often, at least not without your help. I had a really good feeling going into this weekend because we were playing at the Ritter Arena. And Ritter is the middle name of one of my grandsons. And Ritter in Norwegian means night, like green night. So I only assumed that the Ritter Arena, relatively new, was built with green technology. And it was going to be a good home for the green nights. <laughs> My wife Sue and I have been to all seven Frozen Fours. Uh, none of them are boring, all of them are very exciting, but one of the nice things about going to the Frozen Fours is having an opportunity to talk with alumni and to talk with parents. And I can tell you when you talk to alumni of the college but also alumni of the hockey program, they share a great deal of pride in this program. Saturday night after the championship game, we all gathered at Brit's Pub in Minneapolis for a little celebrating. And my wife and I had a, an opportunity to spend some time with Mike Skujinski. Uh, Mike is a, an alum, former goalie at St. Norbert College, and he is now the coach in, at Lawrence and the athletic director at Lawrence. And one of the things he said to me uh, really struck home. He said, St. Norbert doesn't have a hockey team, St. Norbert has a hockey program. And this program is more than just a team. Teams come and go. Programs stay and ha have longevity. And I think that's what we have here clearly, a very strong program. In, in talking with a lot of the parents, what I find is several themes keep coming through. They tell us that they've looked at other schools, but St. Norbert had the best hockey program that they saw. They also said that St. Norbert had the best athletic, or excuse me, the academics. And they liked the fact that their son was going to be part of a community, not simply on a hockey team. All of those things are what St. Norbert brings to these young men. Uh, people come here because of the institution, because of the academics, because of the community, and because of the hockey program. And that is the heart of Division III student athletics. For the players, uh, think about this, especially the seniors, as a, a bookend year. You've got that first bookend of your freshman class when you won the national championship. Now you've got the other bookend, and you've got all that wonderful text that happened in between. Seniors had a great year. One of the key stats for our seniors was 3.1. That wasn't uh, the number of goals they scored. Uh, it wasn't the average number of penalty minutes. It was their grade point average for the senior class. We have a very strong senior class. So I want to congratulate the senior class, not just on how well they do on the ice and how well they perform on the ice, but also how well they perform in the classroom. This is truly a team of character. And it's a team that uh, you've learned lots of lessons throughout the four years that you've been here. And for the freshmen, you have many more uh, lessons to be learned. Lessons about dedication, discipline, responsibility, how to work as a team, how to face adversity, how to handle success. All of these are things that are going to serve you well as you move, move forward. To uh, Coach Tim Coglin. Tim is a record-setting coach, as we all know, 
Uh, he passed Bob Peters this past year in the number of wins in the Northern Athletic Conference, uh, Hockey Conference. There's been some discussion, maybe we should change the name of that trophy. Should it be the Coughlin Cup instead of the Peters Cup? Uh, I, we probably shouldn't start a movement in that direction, but he's also one of the winningest coaches in the nation, Division I or Division Three. But Tim's vision of success for his team goes far beyond that. He's often said that the measure of success of his team is not how well they do on the ice, but how well these young men perform for their communities 10 years after they've left St. Norbert College. Those are powerful words, and they tell us a lot about the measure of Tim Coughlin. For me, Tim Coughlin is the epitome of a Division III coach. And the St. Norbert hockey program is the epitome of Division III hockey programs. And I'm deeply proud to be associated with this group. Congratulations to Tim Coughlin and his coaching staff and to all of your players. Thank you. getting the sense from hearing some of the children in the crowd. First of all, it's close to bedtime. It feels like right around communion during mass when the kids are, you know, there's not much time left and they know it. Uh, we'll keep things going rather, rather briskly. You know, one of the benefits of having the Frozen Four in the West region as we did this year out in Minneapolis is there's no flight involved uh, and the, all the coordination that goes along with that. And I know one man First of all, who none of this could be accomplished without, and that's Athletic Director Tim Bald. And I know he's one man who's very pleased there was no charter to coordinate or pay for this year. I think I want to make that clear. Athletic Director Tim Bald. Thanks, Tim. Yes, we had no flight but you should have heard the belly aching from those who had to fly there, from all the Eastern teams and from Adrian, so it was, uh, it was nice to say, hey, join the club, you know. Um, but we did have to drive through it. Thank God for Dave, the bus driver, right, guys? Any you guys that are safe? I know they went on the bus, and I drove with my family over there because I had to be there with the committee. Seven-hour trip, usually four hours, we went in that snow. But uh, first of all, I'd like to say, um, give my... Uh, condolences on behalf of Dr. Frick, who is would be here, the dean of the college. He wanted to give the best to you guys, but he's traveling right now. And I want to say that to you. He's a person that we report to, the athletic department. Um, but he he really wanted to be here, be here in spirit. Um, I also want to say to Mrs. O'Brien, I know you're sitting there and you're wondering why is he talking to me right now. If we ever go to war, I want you leading us. <laughs> I'll tell you what, she sat in the middle of that Adrian section. Sharon, did you see her? Everybody see her? I thought, oh my God, if she can do that, she can do anything. <laughs> Way to go. Good job. Like I said, I'm on the National Committee, and you get some privileges of being on that. You know, one of them was, the nice thing was being able to hand the trophy to the champions this year. That was a good thing, but because of that, we also get some other opportunities. But I didn't get as many this year around the team as I did when I, back in 2008. So my opportunities to be with them was few and far between this year. But I did have one chance to be with them when I rode on the bus over to practice on Thursday morning because the committee's hotel was right across the street from the Millennium where they stayed. And so I saw Tim and the guys coming out. I was going to go with Tim DeRozier and, and Dan Lucas over. And Tim came out and said, well, just ride with us over. So I went over there. We were going over to Ritter. And we're sitting on there, and we're all set, ready to pull out. Dave was going to pull out the bus driver, and somebody said, wait. Not everybody's here. And I said, well, what's wrong? And he said, Al Jonate, not here. And somebody from the back of the bus said, where is that stinky little Frenchman? <laughs> and then one of the other players said, he's sitting up in the third row, at Tommy Chin Plone. <laughs> Tommy's French, so. <laughs> it was funnier on the bus. One of the nice things, again, of, of 
being on the, on the committee is the fact that you hear a lot of conversations. You hear the conversations when we're setting up the field of the entrance, we hear the conversations at the rink, we hear the conversations outside the locker rooms, in the officials' rooms. We hear a lot of conversations, both that I'm involved in and that I hear going on over the distance. And all of them, all the time when they talk about St. Norbert College hockey, is that it's a class outfit. And that's one of the things I want to make sure that you guys understand, that all over the country they respect you. I heard time and time and time again, St. Norbert College, they do it the right way. They play hard and they do it class. And we've seen some programs in the past that don't do it that way. And I'm just doggone glad, more happy than receiving those trophies when I hear those comments. So on behalf of everybody here, I'd like to be able to thank you and thank the coaching staff for making that possible. And the last thing I want to say, like everybody else is doing tonight, congratulations, national champions. You did us proud. Thank you. No athletic program at any institution, Division I or Division III, can be successful without the support of the administration. And since day one of his administration here, no one has been more supportive of St. Ober College, Green Knight hockey and athletics in general than the president of St. Ober College, Thomas Kunkel. Thanks, Tim. In fact, congratulations to the many, many, many Tims on the dais over there. Guys, I know that you are well aware of how thrilling Saturday's game was, but I don't know if you know exactly how thrilling it was. You may remember about halfway through the game, Adrian tried to take a deep slap shot. Somebody got a stick on it and it veered right over the glass straight into the crowd at about 70 miles an hour. Yeah. Right at me. Actually, Bernard shot it. <laughs> right at my head. Fortunately, because I'm a fabulous athlete myself, I was able to duck just in time, but I did get a bit of a haircut. And I was thinking, I can just see the headline in the St. Norbert Times. Green Knight hockey team wins second national championship. President killed with, by errant puck. Of course, I know many of you are thinking, well, that's a win-win situation. <laughs> maybe so, maybe so. Uh, I feel, uh, especially, I, I, Tim's right, I, I, I played a lot of sports when I was younger, I adore sports, I really, I, I think one of the great uh, treasures of St. Norbert College is this incredibly deep sports tradition that we have had and that we continue today, and certainly the hockey program is, is right at the head of the parade, uh, but I feel especially close to the hockey, I don't know that I should, except last year when we went to the Frozen Four at Lake Placid, uh, I used the presidential uh, prerogative and I, I flew on the charter with the guys and got to spend a couple extra days on that trip and just, you know, kind of hung around and took in some practices and, and just really enjoyed the ambience. It was in the Herb Brooks Arena. It was really cool. Uh, and I don't want to say that I became a, a hockey junkie except, you know, I started to hear back in the New York groove in my sleep. As you all know, they went on to just two unbelievable games in Lake Placid, uh, especially that, that second, the championship game. And I have a lot of non-hockey, you know, uh, playing friends back in the Midwest, and I would try and explain this. I said, if it's a football game, we were on the verge of going into the seventh quarter. And they go, gee, yeah, I said, yeah. And you know, some of you heard me say this before, it was a heartbreaker, great game, but a heartbreaking loss. And, and the point is, is that a lot of people feel like Adversity builds character, and maybe adversity does build character, but one thing I know for sure is that adversity reveals character. And a lot of teams would have come back and said, well, you know, we got closer than anyone expected last year, and that was pretty good, but those people would not have known Coach Coughlin or his players. As you all know, that, that uh, that's not the way we operate. They didn't whine. 
They didn't feel sorry for themselves. They just dug really deep. They went back to work, they skated a little harder, and they set off again in pursuit of a goal. In other words, they demonstrated true character. We're just incredibly proud of this team's accomplishments on the ice, but as Dave said, frankly, we're even prouder of what you accomplish year in and year out off the ice. Every year, you may or may not know this, but every year Tim sends off these players into the world to get good jobs or coaching positions or law school or MBA programs or even medical school. Some remarkable young people on this team, and you're about to hear from a couple of them. He, as Dave also said, he makes sure that they are hitting the books as hard as the boards. St. Norbert College is very proud of you, gentlemen, for all those reasons. Just please do me a favor, and next year at the Frozen Four, win at least one of them by like six to nothing. <laughs> really having a hard time with these one goal games. Congratulations again, and let me just say, can't wait to put another banner right up there. We've already made room for it. Thank you, man. If you were at the banquet last year, you also might remember that uh, Dr. Kunkel also evoked presidential privileges to wear jeans on the charter flight there and back. And I understand he set the dress code for the players tonight. So if you're wondering where that came from, that's, uh, that's where. He also evoked presidential privilege and took my notes with him off the, uh, off the stage, I think. Hold on, just one second. <laughs> Well, we've, uh, we've honored virtually everyone off to the, uh, the left side, my left side up here, your right, clearly. Uh, off to my right, the Cinnabur College hockey team that earned the achievement we're all here to celebrate. And we're going to talk to several of the players here tonight. First is a uh, gentleman who's a senior this year. He's going to be graduating. Uh, Mr. Kunkel referred to folks who go on to medical College beyond St. Norbert. This particular individual will be going to orthodontic school, is that right? Dentistry? Some... Orthodontal school. I have to make sure I get that 100% correct. And I would call this particular individual, having gotten to know him over the course of four years, the best export to come out of Superior, Wisconsin since wild rice. <laughs> Adam Hammerbeck. I just want to say, Tim, you needed your notes for that. <laughs> wow. All I have to say is what a season and what a way to end our careers as seniors and more importantly, as a team. A regular season title, a Peters Cup championship, a national championship, and Coach Coughlin passing the legendary Bob Peters for the most NCHA victories. Wow. I have to share this story with you guys tonight though. This morning I was brushing my teeth and looking in the mirror admiring my mustache and I started thinking. You know what I was you know you know what was going through my mind coach? Thank God you shaved that mustache. <laughs> For those of you that haven't heard of the Coglin curse, I will share it with you. Prior to the 2008 championship, SNC had been in the national finals twice, 2004 and 2006. However, both times we fell to the perennial power Middlebury. So prior to the 2007-2008 season, coach decided to shave his mustache, something that had never previously left his face in his coaching career. <laughs> now, four years later, here we stand as national champions for the second time. You think we have limited space now in the cornerstone for banners? Just think for a second the predicament we would have if you would have shaved a long time ago. <laughs> On a more serious note, the accomplishments of this group of guys this year has been truly remarkable and without question starts with him. Coach Coughlin truly is one of the best and we all feel extremely, extremely privileged to skate for him. 
On behalf of all the guys here before you tonight, I just want to extend our gratitude to each and every one of you. Your support all season long is the main reason we never dropped a game at the Stone. And even better than that was the support we received at Ritter. That support helped propel us through the tournament and allowed us to have this celebration here tonight. So thank you all. I know if uh, Sports Information Director Dan Lucas, who is unable to be here tonight, I, just getting that thought, I know if he were here, he'd be busy crunching the numbers before mustache, after mustache. <laughs> and those would be on our media notes all of next year, I'm sure. You know, each team that accomplishes something great, as this team does, has folks who are, um, you might want to say, behind the scenes or maybe less recognized than some of the others at least until the point when they score a tremendous game-winning goal as Scotty Pulak did in the semifinal against Norwich University in the third period. But Scotty Pulak in his entire career for the Green Knights has epitomized what the program is about. Hard work, effort, and doing all the little things right. Tonight we honor, along with his teammates, Scott Pulak. Wow, this has been an unbelievable four years. Win a championship on the way in and get one on the way out. A lot of hard work and dedication has been put in by the players, coaching staff, and trainers in order to make this happen. So I would like to say thank you to all of them for their efforts. I would also like to thank the students, faculty, and avid fans who make playing for St. Norbert one of the best places in the country. Your continual support is greatly appreciated by all of us. As a Green Bay native, I grew up watching nearly every St. Norbert home game and, develop, er, and have watched the program develop into the national powerhouse it is today. As I became older, I knew I wanted to someday play for the Green Knights. I was fortunate to be given the opportunity to play for the Knights and study here, and my four years have exceeded any expectations I ever had. The St. Norbert community has become like a second family to me, and I will forever cherish my time at the college. Thank you to all of you for joining in our celebration tonight, and hopefully we will be right back here next year. I mentioned a bit earlier, let me just raise the mic a little bit, sorry. He's been here four years. I haven't said anything about him at any of the banquets. Or he's just too nice a guy. He can't hardly pick on. I mentioned earlier that we'd get back to some of B.J. O'Brien's numbers and accomplishments on the season because they are truly outstanding. It feels like I know the last time we were here to celebrate in 2008, we were talking about Kyle Jones, and we've just been very blessed as a college to be able to succeed, succeed somebody like Kyle Jones with an outstanding goaltender like B.J. O'Brien. Just to give you an idea of what he accomplished, he finished the year with three statistical NCAA Division III championships in goals against average at 1.63 for goals against, a winning percentage of 90%. He won nine out of every 10 starts, of course, all of these also partially team accomplishments, as I'm sure I would assume he's going to acknowledge when he gets up here. <laughs> he also shared the shutout title with three other goaltenders this year. He had four shutouts on the season. And what's maybe interesting is the, uh, the goals against average and the winning percentage, as well as the save percentage, is the trifecta. It's the triple crown for goaltenders. And B.J. O'Brien, listen to how close B.J. came to achieving that. He trailed Pittsburgh State's Bobby Lyser by a save percentage. Listen to these numbers. For Lyser, 0.93135. For BJ, 0.93127. So eight ten thousandths of a percentage point away from accomplishing the Triple Crown. And I'm sure the same thing's on my mind that's on all of yours. What the heck happened, BJ? I mean, really, 
One more save, we couldn't do it. <laughs> BJ O'Brien. You know, it's funny when Tim mentions that because Dan Lucas mentioned that as well when we were at the Abbey. And I told him, looking back at some of the videotape, uh, one game that sticks in mind clearly is the uh, conference championship against Superior. They credited me with 19 saves, and after looking at it, I had 30. So thank you for that. <laughs> um, but no, I just, uh, I just got to thank Tim Coughlin for giving me the opportunity. Um, again, with that is Mike Skijinski, who's no longer here. He's with uh, Lawrence as their head coach. Um, when I was playing juniors, St. Norbert came and recruited me. However, I had some other offers. Again, I chose to go to St. Cloud State. Um, I told the coach, you know, if it doesn't work out, you're the first person I'm going to call. Two years later, that opportunity rose. I called Ryan Peterson, told him, Petey, I'm looking at transferring. I'm not liking it here. I want to change. I uh, hung up the phone. Not even 10 minutes later, Coach Coughlin called, BJ, how's it going? I'm like, I need a new home. And uh, from there, it's pretty much history. But I just want to say thank you. It's been the best three years. Um, my teammates, couldn't have done it without you. All, all the defensemen, hats off to you guys this year. My accomplishments are also just as much as yours. Um, this year, we set goals very high, and we knew we could reach them to go out, win our conference regular season, to then win the Peters Cup at home, then uh, playing Hamlin in the quarterfinals at home, beating them four to nothing, great feel, making it back to the, the Frozen Four. Then Norwich comes, which I know a lot of us wanted to redeem ourselves. Not so much redeem, but you know, prove to ourselves that you know we got a good team, and that no matter the outcome, that you know the ultimate goal is national championship. And for us, 11 seniors, I know me and Longley being from Minnesota. What better way to go out than national champions in, in Minnesota? And then in the Adrian game, the guys battled uh, all 60 minutes, team effort. Hats off to every single one of you guys. AJ, Tommy, Coach Coughlin, you guys did an excellent job this year, and it'll be a memory that I'll never forget. Um, I just want to thank my parents, too, for all their support over the years. I couldn't have done it without you. Dale, you mean a lot to me, and you've been there ever since my junior year of high school, and I just want to thank you for everything. Um, let's see, what else we got? Chase, he's been great helping us uh, fitness-wise. Russ, I bet you're so happy that I'm finally gone. <laughs> uh, I see, it seems like I see Russ's office every day. Um, I just want to thank the faculty for all that they've done supporting us, uh, dealing with us leaving on short notice sometimes, um, having to reschedule exams, quizzes. We couldn't have done it without you. Um, the students cheering us on. Love you guys. You guys were awesome this year. Uh, season ticket holders, we appreciate everything that you guys did this year. And lastly, I just want to thank everyone that came to support us at the Frozen Four. For us, it meant a lot, and even though we we're hours away from De Pere, it felt just like a home game, so thank you. I wanted to save this particular one till after BJ uh, sat down, because I know he, he would do, uh, from his heart, thank his teammates for helping him with all of those accomplishments. B.J. O'Brien received the Most Outstanding Player Award at the NCAA Division III Frozen Four two consecutive years. Last year, after 70 saves in the championship game, for those of us who, uh, who might have forgotten that performance, which is pretty hard to do, and this year in a, in a winning cause. So both in a losing and winning cause, Most Outstanding Player at the Frozen Four was B.J. O'Brien. Round of applause. I found out a little bit of news this morning that uh, I hadn't heard until actually I came here today and one of our fantastic fans in the, uh, in the bleachers made me aware of this. 
I knew the vote was coming soon, but the American Hockey Coaches Association has just named Tim Coughlin Coach of the Year for the second time. And of course, as we all know by now, he's also the winningest coach in NCHA history and really led this team to the accomplishment we're celebrating here tonight, the national title. Head coach Tim Coghlan. Thank you very much. Um, Got to set the record straight on a couple of things. You fell asleep in Weggy's class, right? Okay, and he got that got that one wrong. Weggy, we got that part figured out. We were driving to an NCHA meeting back when the coaches were allowed to attend NCHA meetings. That's all I'm saying, Tim. Coaches were allowed to attend back then, uh, and uh, it was during the presidential election between I think it was it was when uh, Clinton was on his way out and Al Gore was on his way in, and I heard Weggy tell me all the way how George Bush was never going to have a chance. So I think you're over. <laughs> Near as I can tell, I don't know why you still have a job. <laughs> I, I say that in jest. Uh, Dave is, is uh, one of our absolute longest and strongest supporters, and I tell the guys regularly, and I post things in the locker room regularly, and uh, like clockwork, before the season starts, Dave sends a note and says, on behalf of you know, the, the faculty athletic rep uh, to hockey, Good luck to the guys. And then he's got a number of guys that he has in class. And then without, you know, right before Christmas, hey, good luck with your Christmas break. And then right before the playoffs, Dave's there every single time with a phone call. As a matter of fact, the night that we beat uh, Superior in Superior, uh, and that happened to be the 371 or 307, whatever the number was that was to be broken at the time, I never even got on the bus yet, and Dave Weggie was the first one to call. So David, I really do appreciate your, your support over time. Uh, a couple of other things I want to just get uh, some reference points straight. Nick Tavis is not here with us tonight to celebrate because he signed a contract uh, with a team in Carolina and he's down in Florida, uh, practiced with them on Tuesday, played with them last night, got a report back from Nick, had a great time, played on the power play, did his thing, talked to the coaching staff, they loved him. He's practicing there today, he'll play tomorrow, he'll play Saturday, and he'll be on his way back to celebrate with the rest of his teammates. So uh, Nick is a large part of this, of this group of team, and he's not here tonight. <clears throat> also missing uh, tonight are Coach Mazzolini, uh, who was hugely influential for both AJ and I and Tommy, and uh, also Chase Emnott, who is uh, out. And I know the guys really appreciate having Chase, and he's absolutely cutting edge when it comes to strength conditioning, and he's done a fantastic job. So with those guys absent, uh, I do want to say a special thank you to President Kunkel. <clears throat> it's been, uh, well, President Kunkel's, I've been here 18 years. President Kunkel's the only president I've really ever seen at a game, uh, let alone on the charter or in the locker room to address the guys. And I think, y y President Kunkel, you don't know how much that means to us as coaches and certainly to our players. So uh, thank you very much for all your support. <clears throat> To the rest of the St. Norbert faculty, we get a lot of people who check in regularly and uh, tell us not only just the bad stories that we have to hear about our guys, but all the good stories that we need to hear about our guys as well. And we really do appreciate the faculty and staff. Um, we have uh, Mayor Walsh here, and it's always nice to see the city of De Pere, and uh, Father James Bereniak, who always starts our season and tends to end our season with uh, a nice kind word that keeps us safe and healthy, and he reaches out to larger uh, steps on, on the ladder and we hear from the holy goalie Bishop Paprocki who was out and skated with us last year and sent a really nice note before we played this year and a, a special blessing for our guys and that means a tremendous amount to all of us. Um, BJ alluded to the fans and the season ticket holders and our students and uh, you know our staff at the Cornerstone Community Center they're they're very gracious to us uh, they're very good hosts and I hope that we're good tenants at the same time. Our game day volunteers, penalty bench workers, um, you know, guys that, goal judges, et cetera. Lots of little things happen that nobody else sees, but we really know that day to day our game ops uh, people are extremely important. Special thank you to our hockey staff, and I'll start by uh, saying the hockey staff uh, will lead with our lead stick guy, Jerry Tochterman, up on top. Guys, what do you think for Jerry?
Sports Information Director uh, Dan Lucas, who could not be in attendance tonight. Uh, athletic trainer Russ Schmelzer. Russ gets the title of athletic trainer. But I promise you, uh, from all of our standpoint, starting with me, number one, he does so much more than athletic training. He's, you know, I, I, I've been in a lot of different situations where I see athletic trainers, and if it doesn't involve tape and ice, they don't touch it. They just don't, it, it's not their job. And Russ goes above and above, uh, beyond the call every single time, and uh, we certainly appreciate the work that he does. Team Dr. Obama, I don't think is Dr. Obama here tonight. I don't think Dr. Obama's here. We had a little transition this year with Dr. Wachowicz, who's been with us the whole time I've been here, and Dr. Obama picked up right where he left off, and so we, the medical staff is extremely important as it talks about our hockey support staff. Uh, and then uh, most importantly to our coaches, Tommy C., Ryan Wempe, uh, Mark Mazzolini, just a huge uh, thank you to all of you guys. And I think our players will tell you straight up, associate head coach A.J. Aiken, there's not another guy out there like A.J. We appreciate the work, A.J., that you do. Uh, without you, we would not be standing here today with this trophy. So. And then I think the, uh, the other, the last and the other thank you I guess I want to throw out there is to all of the young men, and, or all the, not really the young men, but all the, all the guys that I just mentioned and their families and their wives uh, because Tim DeRozier, as an example, you know, he books time off. He uses up all his vacation time so you can listen to the games on the air because he's taking vacation times. Every time we travel, he's got a full-time job and he's using up his time and that's very important to his wife and to his family, to Russ's wife and family, AJ, et cetera. So to all of our coaches' wives and staff wives, we really do appreciate uh, the support that you give all of us that allows us to do what we do. That includes you up there, Barb, wherever you are. You got a screaming baby over there. And, and for me, the, uh, by the way, it was Ryan Peterson that went with the mustache, shave off the mustache thing. Ryan Peterson, I heard he's coming back. He played in Belgium this year. He should be back sometime this weekend, so we look forward to having Ryan back in the fold. Uh, all the alumni that sent notes uh, and follow up, and just to see the guys in, in uh, Minneapolis, you know, you walk into the lobby and they've got the clap going and they've got, they've got your song because it was their song before it was your song, remember that? Uh, really cool, really, really cool stuff, and it means a great deal, and I think that's when, that's when you really start to reflect on what's important, and um, so uh, my biggest thank you on behalf of the coaches staff is to the men of St. Norbert Hockey, both present and past. Uh, we really do honor what you guys bring to the table. We know that it's not the easiest thing to deal with AJ on a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> what? Knock it off. Um, but we really do appreciate it, particularly uh, our senior class of 11. Um, this has been an unbelievable experience for all of us, led by uh, four senior defensemen and a senior goaltender, and you know, losing 100 points from last year's uh, championship team. And I can tell you, every single one of those guys has checked back in to express their uh, you know, way to go out of boys uh, to you guys. And uh, if, if you're a sophomore, if you're a junior, if you're a freshman and you're sitting there kind of taking this in, take time to reflect, to say thank you to your seniors. It's extremely important. They've led the way well. Uh, we've been blessed to have them within our program and they set the bar awfully high, right? So uh, make sure you honor your, uh, your teammates. Uh, thank you all for, for coming out tonight. We appreciate it. Tim DeRozier is back up, I think, next. That's it for me. Thank you. As long as we're uh, closing the program, handing out some thank yous, I want to thank Greg Vins up in the camera perch tonight. Those of you who watched any webcasts or any video replays on SNC5 uh, here in De Pere or Time Warner Cable, which is virtually uh, anywhere, that was all of Greg's handiwork that you saw there on the camera. We couldn't uh, do our broadcasts without him. And Jeff Vins, his son, is up there as well, who uh, helped out with a lot of technical issues, as did J.J. Simpson. Uh, who's an employee here of the college. We had a couple of situations late in the season. We almost didn't get on the air uh, because of some um, technology, internet issues, and, and JJ was there coming in from home, being, I was gonna say paged, but I don't think we have pagers anymore, do we? I don't know. He was texted in, I guess, uh, and, and came in to, uh, to bail us out of a tight spot. So thank you to them as well. 
I want to close with just a, a real uh, brief story from uh, my experience this morning. I attended a leadership class. It was actually uh, about servant leadership. I don't know if anyone else attended here. There was uh, quite a few people there at uh, the Meyer Theater. And they were talking about the need for people to fulfill basic human needs. And two of the basic human needs that they mentioned that immediately turned my mind to the program that we had coming up tonight was that we all have a need to be a part of something bigger than ourselves, something bigger than oneself. And we also have a need and a drive to achieve excellence. And I think I can say that this team accomplished both of those human needs in taking home that 2000. 11 Division III Championship Trophy. And I think they helped some of us who were along for the ride do that as well. So a thank you to the 2010-2011 NCAA Division III National Champion, Green Knights. <laughs> Feel free to sing along. Have a good night, everybody. Purchase some merchandise on your way out the door. Thank you for attending.